So the big question today is, is being able to read your partner a good thing? Today, I'll be sharing with you five steps to improve your ability to read your partner and why that might be a good idea. My name is Jenna Wosu and welcome to the Second Chances Podcast, a love journey in black and white. So a couple of days ago, Davide and I were driving to the grocery store and we heard something on the radio and he made a very sarcastic comment about my Italian language class progress, right? Because I've been taking classes trying to learn the language because of our future plans. But anyway, he made this remark about my inability to speak Italian, even though it's only been a couple of months, um, and instantly my mood switched, like instantly, in one second, boom, mood switched. But this time around, I typically go from a zero to a hundred, but this time maybe I went from zero to 50. So it wasn't so bad. And deep down inside, I was hoping that he wouldn't notice the shift because I really didn't want to be upset or angry. But you know, I just became a little bit more quiet and a little bit more withdrawn. And he caught it. In the early days, he wouldn't catch my mood shift. He wouldn't catch anything. And later on, he'd be asking me, what's wrong with you? What did I do? Da, 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 da. And that would even piss me off even more. But this time he was able to catch it. And he said, are you upset about what I said? I didn't mean it. And he was really able to diffuse the situation pretty quickly so that it did not escalate to my usual 100. Um, so at that point, I was like, wow, look at that. We've grown so much. We've come a long way where now he can actually catch this shift in my energy before it escalates. And he was very proud of it because said, oh my God, I know you so much more now. I feel like I understand you and it's so great to be able to, to read you so easily, read you like a book. I'm still saving a few pages, but don't tell him that. <laughs> but so being able to read your partner, I started to think about it and I found that, you know what? It's a great thing because now you're no longer guessing. I know that for a lot of women, we expect the men to just somehow be able to read our minds like you should be a mind reader of course you should um are you not all wizards <laughs> but that doesn't work and then when we try to communicate what we're feeling we communicate communicate it in the wrong way we use you statements you always do this you always do that you never do that and then the man takes it the wrong way and boom before you know it you're in a, an argument and then the communication starts to break down so I think it's a really, really good thing for uh, everyone who is new in a relationship or you're trying to improve your relationship to practice some of these things to be able to read your partner more effectively so that you know when maybe they're not in a good mood or maybe they're upset or maybe they're even happy. Be able to read correctly their moods so that you can make it better, right? Because that's what we want. We don't want a relationship where we're constantly fighting or we're wondering why this person doesn't care about me. They cannot read your mind, but if they can read your body language, that's a plus. So here I want to share with you five things that you can start to do today to help you read your partner better. The first as always starts with you. You need to understand yourself because if you don't understand yourself, no one is going to understand your emotions. So also always make it a priority to have a good understanding of yourself, why you do the things the, the things you do, what are some of the subconscious beliefs and limiting beliefs that you're still holding on to, what are some of the triggers that you have, and really understanding everything about yourself and your emotions and why it shifts. So that's the first. The second one is to make it a priority. Right? The idea of this is who I am, love me as I am, figure it out, it doesn't really doesn't work in a successful relationship. So make it a priority to understand your partner's emotions, understand their situation, understand how they are, their upbringing, their childhood. You can develop this skill of really being able to read them if you know more about them. So spend time really being being curious about their past, about their personality type, why they do the things they do. And just by sheer observation, you will see a lot of things that shift within your partner. The third one is really about body languages. And I know that for, for me, I can speak for myself. When I'm upset, I'm not really able to communicate with words. So you're better off reading my body language to know how I'm feeling. And if you ask me how I'm feeling, I still would not be able to communicate the body language that um, <laughs> I do. It's just weird. And, and so notice the body language of your partner. 
you know, if they roll their eyes or they shrug or they become quiet or their shoulders go up or they should, whatever it is, whatever cues you can take from a body language, start to pay attention to those, right? Start to learn what does this mean to my partner? Like for me, I roll my eyes a lot. It doesn't mean I'm being disrespectful. It just means here we go again. Not in a rude way. Not in a, I'm not upset. It's just like, okay, here we go. So understanding these nuances of your partner and these gestures and just things that they do naturally can help you get to know your partner a little bit better because no two people are the same. And there's no, I don't believe that there's this universal, what an eye roll means or what a shrug means or what a deep breath means. I just understand what it means to your partner and that can help you decode and understand some of their mood shifts. The fourth one is around their communication style. So for me, I'm very direct, very no filter kind of communication style. I don't like to use too many words. I don't like to ramble. Um, and so being able to understand your partner's communication style is very, very key. Uh, Davide is quite the, he's, he's no filter and direct, but he likes to go around, around, around and give the reasons why he's saying or thinking the way he's thinking. For me, mm, I, I just say what I want to say and that's really it. But then that could come across as frustrating to me sometimes, or it could come across as she's not being as open because she's not giving more information. She's just giving, this is what it is. It is black as opposed to it's black because there was no white and there was no yellow. And I thought that if I bought purple, then maybe purple might not be nice because red is such a, do you see what I mean? But once you start to understand what is this person's communication style, then you, you, you start to appreciate, oh, okay, this is just how they are. This is how they communicate. It doesn't mean anything. It's not something personal. It's just their natural personality. And that way you can start to maybe speak to them in the way that they would understand or they would appreciate as opposed to expecting everybody to speak the way you do. Some people focus a lot on direct communication. Some people are a little bit more indirect. For me, it depends on my mood. It depends on what I'm feeling at that point in time. Yeah. And the last one is, I think is very, very key. In this world and these days of distraction, a lot of us are not present. We're never present. We're all, we always have this 1 million thoughts going on in our mind. But we're always overoccupied with work or with whatever, with life. Life is just happening to us. And we get lost in our thoughts and we're not really able to be present when we're around our partner. You need to be present to be able to observe and notice these changes. If Davide wasn't paying attention to me at that point in time, he could have missed it. Because I'm telling you, I'm working on myself. So I was actually trying to hide the fact that I had gone from, I had left zero. <laughs> I was really trying. So I was just like, okay, Joe, just take a deep breath and just be calm. And me just holding back, I tried to, to almost fake it, but he still caught it because he was present in the moment and he just saw it. So it wasn't, I didn't say any words. I didn't, there, there was really no visual reaction if you ask me, but he was able to read it because he was present in the moment and because he'd been taking time to understand me and study me. And he made it a priority to be able to, to read my body language and read when my emotions shift and my energy shifts. So when you're around your partner or potential partner, be present as much as possible so that you're able to get to read them quicker. You're getting to know them more. And that could save you a lot of heartache because again, it could be positive. It could be negative. There's no judgment here. It's just being able to understand people better. usually makes the relationships go a little bit easier. So those are my five points on how you can get to read your partner better and some of the benefits that come with it. Do I like being able to be read all the time? I don't know. It takes the suspense over because now if you can read me all the time, then I can't even play a prank on him and pretend to be upset. You know how we women would like to take advantage of those kind of things. But all in all, I do think that it, it's a good thing. And me personally, I'm going to start paying more. I can read him anyway, but I'm going to pay way more attention now into um, trying to understand him and really get to know him and be able to get catch those cues as well when things shift with him. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode on the Second Chances podcast, A Love Journey in Black and White. I will see you same time tomorrow. Till next time, sending you love and lights.